just that little bit of dolamo. I mean, it's just just on the fuzz. Let's put it up a, just a, a millimeter more. Um, so when you want some noise, like some people have asked me for in the past, that's it. It's Tony Tiger, named by Mr. J-Man himself. When I took this out of the box, took a picture of it, and sent it to him, he says, Oh, that looks like Tony the Tiger. It's stuck. Okay, so number 57, guys. Peoples, when I first finished this, I had zebras in here. They were a set of Artec. I don't know which version they were, but it was a 16K here and an 8K there. When I took this out of the box this week, what day is it? Last week, before the weekend, um, I started playing with it and I decided, hmm, sounds a little bassy. And so I decided heart surgery was in a store for Tony. Out came the Artex, in when the set of Wilkinson, Alnico 5s, W-O-H, some version. They've been in my stash since 2021, just sitting in the container waiting for an opportunity to show their stuff. And uh, they do. While I had it apart, I took the opportunity to uh, clean up the fretboard because there was a little bit of white speckles in it. It had been in the bag for quite some time. And since I bought some Koa stain uh, recently, I decided to Koa stain this fretboard, which made it look absolutely gorgeous. All a nice standard color now. And uh, the frets that I had up here, I think I fixed them some time ago. Before, after I finished the, the original, I think I fixed it. I had a couple here that were bad. Because I went back to fix them and I go, oh, they're not there anymore. Okay. So, if you watch the series on this, uh, you know I ordered this direct from China. I could not get it made specifically for me from the seller because it was just a shop of some kind. And it came with the Gibson on the headstock. So, you got the smiley face for the people that are the purists. And this is a Les Paul copy. Uh, we appreciate Gibson, right? Uh, we just don't appreciate their prices. Um, same with Fender. So, uh, yeah. We had some fret work on this that was an issue. Um, the finish was pretty good. Buffed. I buffed it again uh, while after I finished working on it and polished it up. I had put some scratches around here with my fingernails uh, doing the thumb wheels. So I took the 2X and fixed that up while I had all of this open. I had a couple around here as well. That's all fixed up. The neck is polished up. And I saw somebody recently put um, beeswax on a rosewood looking 
type of uh, neck. So they cleaned it off with spirits of some kind. Um, and then, after the uh, lemon oiling, they put beeswax in it and buffed it up. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So after I did the koa here and let it dry for 24 hours, I put some Meguiar's detailing spray that I put on the body that makes this feel like wet ice. And, ooh, it sealed it over very nicely and it's slick. There's no more um, feeling tacky or sticky or slow on the fretboard uh, like when I took it out of the bag. So, yes, indeed. This turned out to be you know, really good. I, I did upgrade the tuners to locking um, with the nice, you know, colored, light colored. I think they had green on them or something with the old ones. I, green, nah, it doesn't look good. But these uh, bright, uh, you know, beige. Uh, like all these tulip heads. Looks good. The clear pick guard, the roller bridge. I think I put these speed knobs on there as it came with top hats or something. These are much nicer. They're knurled and it's so easy to use those. Beanie likes these. <laughs> Beanie, Florida. Okay, so 57. Turned out great. Um, I did mention before that this was the one that had the binding over the end of the frets. And I wouldn't do that again because of the leveling issue that I had. Some of the ends were problematic and to get to them I would have had to destroy the binding which I had to take down a little bit in some places but made it work overall the bone nut uh, is in there it might still be giving me a little bit of trouble I might have to file the slots back a little bit there just to smooth them off uh, but it's been in the bag a while um, doesn't doesn't see the light of day very often you can tell it's a veneer I looked inside it's a veneer mahogany back weighs 8.6 pounds and this cost me geez it was like 370 something dollars I think in that range so I'm happy with the Wilkinsons this is 11.5 or 6k this is 7.5k I think uh, so, yes, I've used these before. Uh, they were in the Donna Strat, the uh, yellow yellow Strat, that I converted to an HH, and they worked out very well in that. And just a note, I wanted to say again, if I haven't said it before in another video, I've noticed that when I test pickups on my test jig, which is a Strat style, all routed out, so I could get underneath there with the pick guard, they sound different sometimes uh, between uh, sitting on a pick guard with nothing behind them like a big open cavity versus putting them into a solid body and when they go in a solid body they end up sounding darker so something different between the resonance of sitting on you know um, three layered pick guard with all the open space behind it versus not much space behind this and very heavy mahogany um, the resonance is not exactly the same I think as on a you know a flexible pick guard so I, I turned out to be very very happy with the results of Tony Tony's definitely a, a keeper till my dying breath so I just wanted to give you the story of Tony Number 57, 58's on the way, stand by, and it will be out soon. <laughs> Thank you for all your support. We're getting closer to the 2,000, and the giveaway for the 2,000 subs uh, announcements will keep coming. Appreciate all your support. Catch you in the next one.